Hello, and this is the test unit for my undead halfling army. I've decided to do a regiment of archers first. There are 12 of them on the base, just so I can space them out and get the paintbrush to all those hard-to-reach crevices without it being too overcrowded. It took me quite a while to come up with a basing theme for this army, but I've decided that they're going to be wading through a swamp. So you can see that a couple of them there have actually got parts of their feet or legs removed so that they can be sinking into the swamp, and there are certain crevices crafted into the milliput. A few holes, one of which these two unfortunate skeletal halflings are standing in. The others don't have anyone standing in, but I'm going to use water effects in there. The water effects are just going to be cheap pound shop stuff, so we'll see how that goes. I'm going to test that out on something else first before I actually apply it to the unit. So I'll come back and show you the next step of progress when it has taken place. So here is the unit after the next stage. You can see that lots of tiny little stones have been stuck down and then sand was applied. And then to seal all that, I actually used very, very thin super glue, which I would not recommend unless you're in a very well ventilated area. I just don't like using PVA glue to seal sand because it never seems to work at all for me. Once it's dried up, it just feels like it hasn't been sealed at all, and the sand can quite easily come off, especially when dry brushing it later. So if anyone knows of any better products that can seal better than your average PVA glue, and are slightly less noxious, shall we say, than super glue, let me know. Anyway, it's time to spray these guys next. I'm not sure how I'm going to paint the actual skeleton halflings, whether I'm going to use any quick shade on them or not. It depends on what colour scheme I go for with their clothing. I'm sure it won't be anything too bold. It's going to look very, very grimy and dirty and swampy. So, on to the next stage. So, here we are after all the base coats have been applied. Almost, at least. This is a stage where models tend to look terrible when you've just put the initial colours on but there are no washes or highlights or anything. The base has got plenty of dry brushing going on, as you can see. Obviously I'll be saving the grass and water effects for last. Instead of making them look really grim, I decided they should actually be quite cheery and colourful because they are still halflings at the end of the day. So, nice yellow colour scheme with blue hats with pink feathers. But they are going to be dirtied up fairly soon because as soon as I finish the base coats and neaten everything up, that's when the old quick shade is coming out. How to paint models fast when you don't have that much painting time or motivation at the moment. So we'll see how they look after the next step, and they should look a lot tastier than right now, where they look very, very simplistic. Okay, and we have some very, very shiny skeletal halflings at the moment. That is because not only have I applied the quick shade, but I also put a layer of gloss varnish on there as well, since they are metal, so I'm going to want to double varnish them for extra safety. I don't know if you can see it at this stage, but one tip I'll give you if you're going to use quick shade or any of the full miniature wash like that, that some people might say is cheating. Obviously that's going to give you a shade, but it's always good to have a shade and a highlight, especially when there are some dark colours on here that aren't going to be that affected by the quick shade. For example, the hats and the bows and various other browns on there, like the belts and so on. So what I did was I dry brushed each individual skeleton with white first. You can't see it that clearly on the bone or on the yellow clothing, but on the edges of the hats you can definitely see it. Maybe not now, because they're very shiny, but when it's all finished that should make them look a little bit tastier. This is something I learnt while painting my zombies for my undead army, which were quick shaded up to the eyeballs, and above the eyeballs in fact. And when I initially painted the zombies I didn't do any dry brushing on them, and they look pretty flat as a result, but then... I figured out the old dry brushing prior to the quick shade technique and used that on the ghouls in my undead army. So if you've seen pictures of those, you'll see the difference between the two techniques. On the back here you can see the arrow packs, which were just painted in brown, but then the white dry brush really helps a lot there. They would look extremely flat without that, but as it is it picks out all the edges and there's some nice texture going on there as well. Same for the feathers perhaps as well. Although they're, of course, going to pick up the quick shade a lot better than the brown of the packs. So after the quick shade, of course, you have to leave them overnight to dry before applying anything else to them. And if they were plastic, I would just put a matte varnish on them immediately over the top of that, since it leaves them quite shiny. But since they're metal, 
going for the gloss varnish and a matte varnish, which will be applied as soon as this layer has dried. Still a little bit wet at the moment, so maybe tomorrow, because it's getting quite late now. Typically, with the matte varnish over the gloss, it takes a couple of goes, because there are always some parts that you inadvertently leave unmatted. So typically you'll have to wait for it to dry and then go over any little spots that you missed to take away all that shine. And then after that, it's going to be time for the grass and the various swampy effects that will be going on here. This is of course the stage with the biggest jump though, when that quick shade goes on there. Suddenly they go from looking really awful to acceptable, I would say. Especially considering I'm going to have to do a full army of these and I want to get them done in the quickest time possible. Which isn't always the case, but with these it definitely is. Going for speed over quality and quick shade is perfect for that. Not far to go now, and all the skeletons have been beautifully de-shined now. So they should all be nice and flat. However, I did decide to apply a layer of gloss varnish onto the ground beneath them, which I'm then going to apply grass to, in the hope that in some areas you'll be able to see the shine through the grass, and in other spots I may just leave the grass off entirely, since it is supposed to be a horrible, muddy, swamp-like area. So all that remains now is the grass, and then I'm going to experiment with some water effects, very cheap water effects, of course. I'm going to test it out on something else first. I don't want to risk ruining this masterpiece that took untold hours of quick shading and layers of varnish. Okay, here we have the completed unit. All the water effects and grass and everything is on there now. All 100% complete. And if I turn the camera to a particular angle, I'm sure you can see the shine on those water effects a bit better. And by water effects, of course, I mean pound shop. From this angle, you can see the nice shine on the water effects there. And by water effects, of course, I mean ultra cheap two-part epoxy resin. And the first attempt I made, I did have to actually peel off a little bit of it because it was drying quicker than I anticipated. So I was still fiddling with it when it was starting to set and it was pulling it into weird positions. So I just ripped that part off and did it again. So the first unit for the army is complete. And I'm going to be even more adventurous with the water now. The next unit, which I've already started building, is going to have quite a large pool of water in the center with a few guys stood in it. Of course, not every unit base needs to have that much water on there, but a fair few of them will. I think it adds a lot, especially because I haven't put in that much time into painting the miniatures. I still think they look effective, but I'm putting a lot more creativity, shall we say, into the basing and keeping it simple for the models themselves. I've also just ordered some more bases so that I can finish off the army as it is right now. I've got enough models for a few more units. So hopefully I should be able to get those done pretty quick. I want to do a few units at a time, because the water effects, I'm not sure how it's going to last since I've now taken the lid off. There is a cap to go on it, but I don't know if that's going to do the job, because it is very cheap. So I'd rather be doing multiple units at once, just in case I have to dispose of the resin. So I'll do a video looking at some of the Halfling Skeleton Cavalry that's currently on Kickstarter. So keep your eyes peeled for that and look forward to seeing this army on the table when I've got a few more units complete. Ta-ta for now.